Hi there, that's right, great and glorious, you'll be famous one day, and you touch back on the camera, yet again, yeah! Now, I want this video to be called, Why I Do Not Believe. Now, I had intended to do, um, like a series of, um, quasi-motivational posters to illustrate what I'm talking about, but the software that I was doing that in basically crashed, I'm just telling you, so that you can hopefully, um, listen to what I'm saying and pay attention to the words rather than any like groovy images I could give you to you know illustrate my point. Uh, belief itself I regard as being something which can in its extremes inhibit your appetite for knowledge and I personally think that's a very bad thing. There are some people who take their beliefs to the point whereby the belief becomes reality and that's actually a very dangerous um, point because when something which isn't true appears to be true to a certain point then it becomes a psychosis it's a mental disease it's a separation from reality which I'm sure every individual in the whole wide world will want to try and avoid the way that we try and avoid these things and try and keep ourselves sane and rational especially when we're experiencing peculiar cultural phenomena or trying to experience peculiar phenomena such as when we're doing like no Ouija board seances, meditation, prayer and the rest of that. We've got to be able to think. There's different ways of um, understanding and thought. The first one is of course science which is an attempt to come closer to the truth. I mean the word science some people say just means the search for the truth. But in order to do that, you've got to learn some of the methodologies of science so you can come closer to finding out what's true. The bottom line is, we can't find out 110% what is true. All we can do is um, say what seems to be true. I mean, the whole thing about the body of knowledge called science is it's based upon the search for the truth. And science never says that things are totally solid facts, which is a bit, bit of a shame, really which is probably why, as many other YouTube videos have mentioned, there's such a thing as theory, and theory is explanations to why certain things seem to happen. All right? And to when we think about psychological phenomenon or sociological phenomenon, the thing that w is used to measure uh, the likelihood of something being more true than other things would be statistical analysis. So if we're doing anything, we've got to work out how we classify and quantify and qualify our results and also work out how reliable that result can be obtained and also by, you know, which methods and to be as precise as we can, taking as much information from science to be able to do that which unfortunately most people in the occult world don't so I myself try and become more scientific about the kind of things that I do because I don't, I don't want to be a believer, I don't want to lose my marbles, I don't want to become like these um, charismatic evangelical people or uh, the conspiracy theorists, for instance. I mean, that they are the, com the complete and perfect expression of someone who has not applied scientific reasoning and is just applying ideas and prejudices and thoughts and feelings that other people have given them and treating them as if they're true, whereas within science we can't really say that things are that clear-cut. All right, the next thing is art. Now, art just means the improvement of skill. All right, so if you're someone who does meditation, you can improve the skill of meditation with the passage of time. All right? You just can do that, and you can research into neuroscience as to how meditation affects the mind so you can get a better understanding or potential understanding as to what the meditation could be doing to yourself. And it's important to study these things, all right? Now, superstition is when a person accepts something to be true without there being enough evidence or enough thought gone into it. For instance, when I was going through pagan circles, I was told, I was given superstitions which I was told were essentially real facts of, the, of nature. You know, like, don't burn a black candle when it's the full moon or the goddess won't like you for it. Um, you know, there's some rituals you're, you're not meant to do at certain times of the year because you're treading on someone's toes. I mean, this is pure superstitious rubbish. There's no reasoning or thought gone into this. And so that's something else we've got to avoid. And 
and the way we do this is through thinking. We try and be scientific. We try and think about what's, what's actually happening and going on. We try and be uh, creative and try and improve our skills, including our skills of thought. How do you improve your skills of thought? You use philosophical methods to work out to what degree something is useful or not. Now, philosophy is not just sitting on your backside and saying that maybe the universe was created by some celestial being farting. Okay, that, that isn't philosophizing, okay? Or maybe, you know, we're all one really. I mean, you've got to be able to think in much greater detail than just this, like, um, adolescence, new age thinking. You, you just can't carry on doing that because you're becoming more and more separated from reality. The thing we've got to guard against is psychosis. Now, psychosis is mental disease. It's a separation from reality. It can occur because of believing. Remember what I said earlier on. Belief can be something which inhibits your appetite for the growth of knowledge. Because what you started believing becomes true to you. That's a dangerous thing because you end up being separated from reality because your beliefs become real to you because you stop thinking, all right? Now, if, if I was to go on another ghost hunting trip and there was to be a Ouija seance, I, I might take notice of what, you know, notes of what's happening and it might be fun, it might be interesting and all the rest of that. But I can't ascribe too much hard and fast reality into what is happening there. I have been on ghost hunting events and there's been people saying, no, it was a spirit that was moving the glass. You've got no proof that it was a spirit moving the glass. The only thing that happened is that the glass moved. That's all you know. It is superstitious and even psychotic reasoning to say that you know, in inverted commas, that it was the spirit that moved the glass. You can say you, you believe it, but if you do choose to believe it, you're actually steadily going mad. You, can, you can't have that if, you're, if you want to become closer to the truth. All right? The word science means, in one, one of its contexts, all right, to search for the truth. You can't say, oh, the glass moved, therefore the spirit moved the glass. Because right, that's not searching for the truth, but that's stating something as if it was true without thinking about it, without going through the methodologies of philosophy <laughs> to ascertain what the heck is going on there. Now, I'm not a believer because I want to avoid these pitfalls. I'm not a believer because I want to carry on learning and carry on thinking. I'm not a believer because I don't want to accept somebody else's bullshit. Now, Karl Marx, the great and amazing Karl Marx, founder of Marxism, you'd have thought he would know everything about Marxism. So what, ask yourself, why is it on one particular day he actually says, I am not a Marxist? I'll tell you why, okay? There's an important parallel between me being on YouTube and this instance with Karl Marx, what happened is you went to see some kind of presentation. There was this um, young, enthusiastic idiot who completely misinterpreted and misrepresented Marxism in his presentation. And Karl Marx said to this young arsehole, Do you really expect me to believe that that's Marxism? To which the young arsehole said, Yes. And Karl Marx, who realized that what the young guy was talking about was a complete load of rubbish, said, Then I am not a Marxist. All right? Now, people approach me and say, yeah, well, you're not a believer. Yeah, but your understanding of belief is to accept the fact that there really was a spirit moving that glass, when basically we just don't know. But we can experience, we can try and grow in experience, and maybe some of those experiences could have some kind of theoretical, sorry, hypothetical use. And may possibly shed some more light, if not on the imaginary world or the psychological world, than on the human condition. This is part and parcel of what being rational is about. Trying to expand your knowledge and not stopping at a belief. This is why I'm a rational occultist. Because I may do meditation, I may do prayer, but you don't have to fucking believe in something if you're going to do a goddamn prayer. You know that you're doing a mind-altering exercise if you do it long enough because you've done the academic research into neuroscience. Alright? You know that. That, that's, well, sorry, that's as close to knowledge we can get because, you know, the studies are out there. Go and look them up.
And as far as tarot is concerned, what I, what I can say from experience is that I'm actually helping people because I'm trying. I, I talk people out of stupidity when I'm doing tarot readings. All right, not the little ones I do on the Nick Dutch Tarot YouTube site. All right. <coughs> so anyway, just a bit of an insight into where I'm coming from. So here I am, just as Karl Marx said, he was not a Marxist. I am not a believer. Shove that in your pipe and smoke it. Kind of. <laughs>